this is my review on the Bali Ballistic Custom Tonto. Um, I got this knife on loan from a fellow Blade Forms member, uh, Eric78, so I wanted to thank him for uh, loaning me his uh, Bali song. Uh, these are very hard to um, come by as uh, the maker, Sean um, Gretchen. Uh, I, I probably butchered his name, but um, I'll put in the uh, notes or annotations. Uh, he's a maker of the Bali Ballistic Knives. And um, they're hard to come by just because he's uh, so busy now that um, he's really not taking any, any orders. So uh, I'm actually on the list for this particular sprint run that he's doing. This is the Lum Tonto. Um, I think he put about 10 or 11 people on the list. I think I joined the list, um, uh, I don't know, you know, it might actually have been almost a year ago now. And um, I think he's still only about halfway through. So that kind of gives you an idea of um, how busy his, his schedule really is, you know. Um, from what I know off the forum, Sean's been making uh, Bali songs not for that long, maybe only um, a couple years, three years. So he's a fairly new maker to the to the Bali song community, but his uh, work really has just uh, taken off and gotten a um, extremely good reputation for the uh, level of quality, the uh, the way his uh, his grinds are ex are extremely well done, and just you know the overall design of his knives have just been excellent. Um, he uses uh, really good, really really good uh, material. Titanium handles is usually what he uses. Uh, skill spacers, um, the blade material. Um, I think it's S30V. I, I could be wrong on that, so I'll add an annotation if I'm if I'm wrong on that. Um, but basically, they are uh, custom knives. He has um, beyond just the Lum Tonto. He's got a lot of different styles and designs of uh, different handle profiles and patterns, as well as um, a lot of variations of uh, blade grinds which is really what he's, I would say, probably best known for. His, his grinds are just, uh, just excellent, you know. Um, so what I'm going to do is kind of uh, go from my, my normal way, uh, the easiest way I find to review a knife, is just go from the uh, latch up and uh, go over the overall look, appearance of the knife, uh, the build quality, and the flippability, and then kind of my overall impression of the, uh, of the knife. Um, so starting from the latch, uh, this is a, a typical latch that Sean, uh, uses in his work. Uh, it's, it's a T style latch, um, but with the, uh, the pin through it. And he puts a little notch here at the end of the, um, at the end of the, each handle so that it clicks in, uh, just like so. And I found that in the open and closed position, this latch actually holds the knife together extremely well. Uh, no play whatsoever. And I've opened and closed this uh, a good amount of times. I'm not really sure what the, how many times the uh, original owner did it. But usually, you know, I, I have flipped this too. Usually after flipping a knife for, for a while, opening and closing it, I've noticed that a lot of times in, in Bali songs, even the best of Bali songs, um, this latch starts to get, develop some play. But this one is very tight in the open and closed position. He seemed to have really got the tolerance right, and that little groove on each side of this safe handle definitely plays it, uh, plays it does its part in holding it together. Um, it will get caught like this when you're flipping sometimes, I did have that, uh, that issue a couple times, but overall it's a very um, well designed latch, a very tight fit and finish on it. Um, it does come with a pocket clip. Uh, Sean has this, um, this kind of trademark three-hole pattern on his clips, which I think gives it a very distinguished look. The clip is just done perfectly, as you can see. And it actually functions pretty well. Uh, from what I know, he kind of designed this knife to be a user. Um, that's why he has the clip on it. And it, it functions well. I, um, I did carry it a little bit. I didn't carry it too much just because it's a very expensive knife and I didn't want to lose it. But um, in carrying it, the clip functioned very well. No play. And um, yeah, it definitely, definitely did its part. And it didn't really get in the way for flipping at all. It's pretty low profile, pretty thin. Handles are titanium slabs. It is a sandwich style volley song. 
Um, the spacers, I believe, he usually uses steel spacers. I'm not positive what the material is on, on this particular one. But um, this is his uh, probably his most typical skeletonized pattern. Just a standard hole pattern here. I actually like this look a lot. Very simple, but at the same time, it it just looks very awesome on this knife. Or on, on any of his knives, really. He does a variety of patterns. He has like the Morse code style patterns. He has slotted patterns. He does inserts as well. But this is probably his most common pattern that I've seen. It's kind of it's kind of simple, but at the same time, you know, it gives it a great look. Uh, the spacers are kind of thin. They actually don't add as much weight as um as I thought they would. Um, because if you if you look at the the Bali Ballistic has steel spacers, but these spacers are actually um, very. These spacers on the Bali Ballistic are actually very uh, large compared to the Bali. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, on the on the Basilisk, they're thick and they're pretty large. If you can kind of see, they um, they actually just they take up a little bit more. These look big, but they're cut like if you. I don't. It's kind of hard to pick up on the camera, but they they have a, a good uh, sweep to them, I guess, to clear the blade. So that actually takes away from a lot of the um, material of this spacer. So it actually ends up being being kind of light. So as you can see, the spacer is cut very thin. You see, how it goes almost to the uh, almost to the other uh, to the bottom of that hole. So. The spacers are actually very thin, so they, they actually don't weigh as much as you would think. It looks big from the back, but because there's a lot of material cut out here, they actually are kind of light, so you don't get as much weight as, as you'd, you'd think, just based on the appearance alone. But overall, um, extremely feels extremely solid in, in the hand. Uh, the handles are actually very fat. Um, they're very, very thick. I've... It's one of the thickest polysongs I've handled, just to compare it to the Basilisk, which the Basilisk actually has very thick handles. Um, so as you can see, here's the 42, the Basilisk, and the uh, Bali Ballistic. And you can see the Bali Ballistic is, uh, is definitely thicker than the 42, a little bit thicker than the Basilisk. And uh, in flipping, you do feel that. I think it's actually just a little bit too thick for to be like a fully driven performance flipper. Because uh, when you're doing stuff like uh, helicopters and stuff like that, instead of it being a little bit more like a circle, it's more square. So it, it's, uh, it's a little bit tougher to be fluid with it. Um, the pivots, uh, Sean usually uses bushings. This particular model has bushings. And it's, it's excellent. Uh, they have phosphorus, bronze, washers. Um, very slick performance. And... Um, Pretty much absolutely no play in the handles. I didn't adjust this at all and I've, I've been flipping it so. Um, the only other knives that I can think of that come like this were the Tachyon, the Microtech Tachyon, and the uh, actually the Benchmade 53, which also uses a, uh, a bearing style system. So that was very impressive. Now, the best part of the blade of the knife is the, the blade profile. Uh, again, as I mentioned before, this is pretty much Sean's uh, specialty, the, his grinds. This Lum Tonto is one of his newer grinds and it just is excellent, absolutely perfect in the way that he ground this blade. It's very unique. I like how he um, made the tip kind of thick here. And then um, how it, I like how it kind of sweeps in like this into this very, very hollow ground blade up here. But yet up here it's like, it's like a, I guess a convex type of grind. And then you put this swedge that just flows perfectly. It's, the, it's pretty much the best uh, blade grind that I've, I've handled myself. It's a very thick stock. Most of his knives incorporate pretty thick stocks. And, and like I mentioned, it's a very hollow, extremely sharp 
um, blade grind. This is definitely my favorite Tonto style blade. And all his work, uh, his grinds are just pretty much flawless. So overall, um, the quality of this knife is is um, excellent. I mean, it is definitely one of the best made knives I've ever handled. Uh, it goes beyond the quality of the Tachyon. Um, definitely goes beyond the quality of like the 42 by long shot. I mean, it is a custom, so you'd expect it to be like that. Tolerances, everything, just perfection. You know, everyone who's bought one of his knives pretty much has said the same thing. As soon as, you know, the pictures really don't do it justice. As soon as I handled this, I was just extremely impressed. You know, it felt, it just feels solid. It feels like a custom knife. It gives you that feeling that you're holding something very exclusive and very, very, very high, high quality. Uh, it's pretty much what I would consider, like, you know, the the Bentley of, of Bali songs, in my opinion. Um, now, as far as um, flippability, um, I don't really think Sean designed this purely as a flipper, um, but it does perform fairly well as a flipper. I flip with it pretty extensively. Um, the the issues that I had, and I don't really want to call them issues because it's it's kind of the way that he wanted to build this knife. He, he likes using a very thick stock for his blades because, and I think that's because it gives him more flexibility as to, as to um, how he does his grinds. You know, with a very thin blade profile, you can't do stuff like this because if you do, it's going to become too brittle and delicate. Um, that's just my theory. I mean, I could be wrong. I'm not a knife maker, but he likes very thick stocks and what that ends up, what ends up happening is that makes for a very blade heavy Bali song. And he uses titanium handles, which are, which is very light. They are sandwiched, not channel. And the spacers, as I mentioned before, are very thin. So um, all that combined causes it, this to be a very blade-heavy Bali song, uh, but not to the point where it's like a Mayhem or the Benchmade 53, where it's almost unflippable. You know, this knife is is pretty flippable. I did all right with it, but I do find it a little bit more hard to manipulate than say something that's more of a dedicated flipper, like a Basilisk or your Benchmade 42 or even the 51. It is hard to flip in those three knives. I don't flip nearly as well with it. Also because the handles, I think, just go a little bit too thick for for purely flipping purposes. Um, that adds to some tricks to, uh, to be a little bit harder, but um, still very manageable. Can I do everything um, that I can with the Basilisk and the 42 on the uh, Bali Ballistic? Uh, probably, but it would come with a lot more practice, and I don't know if I could pull it off quite as smooth. But it does perform well. Um, overall, I'd say it's like a maybe like a 7 out of 10 as a flipper, but as an overall knife, for what it is, it's definitely a 10 out of 10, just because of its its build quality and its overall design and its grind, and for all the other good good things that I, I mentioned about it, you know, that would make it a 10 out of 10. And like I said, he didn't make this as a dedicated flipper, so I'm not judging it purely off of, off of that. But uh, overall, yes, it's an excellent knife. I hope that he you know, gets gets his production um, up so more people can experience this great knife. Um, I have this same one. I'm on the waiting list for this exact same one. Um, and I'm really looking forward to getting it. So um, thank you for watching the review. Uh, if you have any questions, um, let me know. I'm going to link to, he just started a new website, so I'm going to link to that uh, if, so people can learn a little bit more about his knives and get his contact info. Um, but thanks for watching. And uh, hope to see you guys in my next review. Thank you.